Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, our focus on education continues as school systems across the Gulf Coast learn to adapt and embrace flexibility as our children return to school. And that's why we continue to explore as our Gulf Coast school systems consider their options and change course to help students learn while keeping them safe from COVID-19 this school year. Mobile County Public Schools Superintendent Cressel Threadgill took a bold stance against the spread of the coronavirus by delaying the school year until Tuesday, September 1st, and even then announcing that his public school students will begin the new school year by online teaching for the first nine weeks. Now let's watch as the Mobile County Public School System gives us an update on providing the Chromebooks needed for the new school term. We've got a, a group here that's been working very hard uh, getting our laptops set up, uh, getting them staged uh, out to certain schools and uh, getting those placed in their Chromebooks and they're coming in uh, about 5,000 at a time on the trucks. So mostly our district uh, over the years has been a BYOD district, a bring your own device. Uh, we've not been a one-to-one -one district and then of course most of that's been due to funding and, and now because of CARES Act money and some other things that the federal government is uh, uh, allowing students to have, this is helping us go one-to-one -one. and of course this is this is uncharted territory, not just for our school district, but for any school district where you take uh, any number of students, what less 53,000, and you take them and you do virtual learning at home. And so we scrambled quickly. Uh, we, had about, we had enough devices for about half the students that we already had purchased and was there to check out from the schools. So we had to supply the remaining half of students with computers, and that's what we're doing here today. And of course, a lot of hard work going on to meet that need for 53,000 students. And we thank the Mobile County Public School System for that update. Also, the Archdiocese of Mobile has said that, quote, it's a new day in Catholic education. The school year for parochial education has begun and again, it's facing new challenges as school officials are making sure the children, teachers and school employees are all safe from the coronavirus. Archdiocese officials allowed each local school to provide input on developing the best safety protocols to address this new challenge at their individual facility. Today's guests are Cressel Threadgill, superintendent of Mobile County Public Schools, Alabama's largest school system. And also joining us today, Gwen Bird, superintendent of the Catholic Schools for the Archdiocese. Protecting and educating our children, questions that we will explore as Perspectives continues after this break. Joining us now, Mobile County Public Schools Superintendent, Mr. Cressel Threadgill. We thank you for being a part of Perspectives this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Eric. A recent story on national news talked about the largest school systems throughout the country and each state, and they were talking about how they had to make decisions with so many students uh, in mind with this COVID-19. And of course, Mobile County Public Schools was one of those of the large school systems. How difficult was it for you to decide to go virtual for opening the schools back up in September? Well, first of all, Eric, uh, I, I want to begin by saying that uh, there is no, absolutely no substitution uh, for face-to-face -face teaching and, and learning. Uh, but I had to uh, look at the positive cases in our area. I also had to look at the um, number of deaths that we had in, in our area. Uh, coupled with uh, this virus, uh, COVID-19, uh, being uh, so new, uh, and as superintendent, I could not jeopardize the students, which are my babies, uh, our faculty and staff, as well as their families. Uh, so I know uh, that the parents, this was a tremendous um, uh, heart 
hardship on the working parents. And my heart, as I said at my press conference, my heart goes out to, to them. Uh, but as superintendent, uh, my priorities are the safety and well-being of my students, uh, faculty and, and staff, uh, which is over 60,000 uh, individuals. Uh, so it was a tough, tough decision, but I believe we made the right, the right decision. When you hear some of the reports that are coming from around the country, like the Cherokee County Schools outside of Atlanta, another major large system, as well as uh, some of our local school systems in Mobile County having to face that challenge, do you feel uh, more secure now about what you will be doing starting September? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we feel very confident that we made the right, right decision. Uh, a lot of preparation has gone into uh, getting ready for September the 1st. Uh, um, and, and there's no real um, right decision at this point. No one really knows the right de decision. Uh, we are all taking it week by week and day and day by day, but I do, be do believe that we made the right decision. Now, how <clears throat> does what you're planning on doing in September compare to what you had to pivot to do at the end of the previous <clears throat> school year uh, back in March when this was thrust upon everybody, really? How is this new virtual learning experience going to be similar but yet different? Well, <clears throat> Eric, in, in spring, uh, the shutdown came unexpectedly and we only had a couple weeks to get to get prepared, but there were several things, a couple things that, that really helped us. Uh, number one, I know it's uh, very difficult to get devices and Wi-Fi's out to 53,000 students. Uh, but what, what we did was we had the uh, capabilities of handing out instructional packets, which were hard copy uh, packets to our students uh, to kind of uh, um, not be so uh, comprehensive with our devices. Uh, we also, that, that actually helped us was there was two local uh, TV channels uh, that provided airtime for our teachers uh, to teach our students live. And at this moment, I would like to give a shout out to Channel 10 because they were one of the uh, TV channels to um, provide that resource for our students. Uh, so we're very appreciative of that. Um, the, the other thing that we found in the spring that we had several different learning management systems, uh, things like Google Classroom and Moodle, and some of the parents were frustrated because there were so many different uh, platforms that we were using. So moving forward um, uh, in the fall, uh, we corrected that situation. And as you know, as I announced that we will be going 100% uh, virtual and remote learning. So let me pause right there and just kind of explain to you the difference between the two because I think there's some confusion on the terminology. Uh, but virtual school, uh, which we've had in Mobile County for several years, is our in envision. And it's pretty much a student pace pro program where the, where the computer teaches the child. Um, so in that learning platform, you have con Connexus and you have Access. So our virtual school is envisioned and that's eighth through 12. Now remote learning, it's something a little different. That's when the, the, the kids go uh, with a schedule, they, they get up, they're being taught um, by their teachers live. They're able to interact and ask, ask questions. Uh, so those two are very different, uh, but we sometimes use them in the same, same way. So we have virtual school, which is our envision, which is a program base, and then we have remote learning uh, that we provide our teachers to give uh, face to uh, through the computer teaching. Um, now, to correct the other problem with all the learning management systems, we've gone to one universal platform which is called Schoology, and that has been provided by the State Department of Education, and it's what we call our one-stop shop. Um, everything is loaded in that Schoology. Um, you, have your, you have your curriculum, uh, and all the administrators, teachers, and parents can gain all the information from that one universal plat platform, and we're very pleased with that and the teachers are, are, are very pleased with it. So your adjustments that you're making for this new school year, did you learn some things back in March through the end of the school year that has helped you make 
better preparations now? Ab absolutely. One of the main things that, that we found um, is a gut check. Uh, we found that in, in the spring, um, our teachers and our ad, 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 administrators are very re resilient. Uh, so we got through it and we would get get through this. Uh, there are several logistical things that, that we uh, adjusted uh, moving forward. So, so yes, the spring really prepared us for this, this fall. Now how are you making adjustments for the kids who may not have Wi-Fi and the internet and may not have their own uh, personal device to be able to use these new systems? Right, so that's a uh, problem not only in the state of Alabama but also across the nation. Everyone is ordering devices and um, shipment is being slowed, slowed down. But I would, I would want to uh, take this opportunity to thank the governor, uh, Kay Ivey, who has released $100 million for um, Wi-Fi uses, um, not just for Mobile, but for the state of Alabama, uh, and it's through vouchers. So all the families, uh, the students who do not have um, internet um, they will be able to gain access to internet free uh, until the month of de December. Uh, we also uh, had to order over 30,000 devices. Uh, and as you know, uh, that's going to take time to deploy those those devices. But we feel like between the Chromebooks that we've ordered and the iPads that we currently have, we think that we have a good um, um, proactive plan uh, to get those devices out for September the 1st. What about your teachers? How do they feel about this virtual program that uh, lies ahead for September 1, as well as uh, the extra training that I'm sure you had to do to get them prepared? Right, so uh, as you know, in, in the spring, we didn't have time to prepare. We didn't have time for professional development. Um, but, but now we're taking this month of October, uh, I mean this month of August, to uh, really um, uh, hone in on professional development uh, to get the teachers um, familiar with this platform, uh, Schoology. Uh, we have over 150 professional development sessions for our administrators as well as our teachers. And I think the teachers are very appreciative that we're taking this time, we're taking this opportunity to really get them familiar, for, familiar and prepared uh, for September the 1st. And quickly, if you could share with us, when will you be able to assess what happens in the first uh, semester of the year to be able to see how you will return after the uh, end of the year holidays? Well, we, we constantly are looking at the numbers. Um, we, are, we are very hopeful uh, that the numbers will start trending down. Uh, and once they start doing, doing that, uh, we will go back to the, the drawing board and uh, we will come up with another plan to try to transition uh, some of our kids, some of the population back into the buildings. Superintendent Kressel Threadgill, we want to thank you for being a part and also congratulate you on your uh, nomination and recipient of the District Superintendent of the Year. And of course, we hope that uh, you bring that back from the state award as well here to the local area. Thank you, Eric. Once again, Kressel Threadgill, Superintendent of Mobile County Public Schools. When Perspectives continues, we talk with Gwen Bird, Superintendent of Catholic Schools for the Archdiocese. We'll be right back. And we're talking with Superintendent Gwen Bird of our Archdiocese School, Department of Catholic Education. We thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Now, Ms. Bird, you have been involved with Catholic education since uh, several years ago, starting as a teacher in the Catholic school system. Has this been the most difficult year you can remember starting school back up again? Absolutely. I've never ever had such an experience and I've been in it a long, long time, a long, long time. Now when we talk, we were talking earlier and you shared with me something that a priest had to say about <laughs> life and changes and how it relates to COVID-19. Share that with us. Well, he's, he said, you know, you, you don't think your way into a new kind of living. You live your way into a new kind of thinking. And that is truly where we are today every day but when COVID hit that just fits it perfectly 
But he also told me another one that's funny, but he said, um, Charlie Brown, this one he told me, he said, um, in the book of life, there were no answers at the end. <laughs> that's right, no, uh, no yellow book, right? <laughs> no sometimes notes. that's how I feel. <laughs> that's it. There are no answers, you have to make the answers for yourself, you know. Now tell us how difficult was it to put your plan together that you have in place now because you are back open, schools are open, the doors and the students are back returning. How difficult was it to plan this for the Archdiocese? The best thing we did was to give it to our schools. We asked each of our schools to come up with a task force. And so on their task force, they had some of their teachers, some of their parents, some of their workers, that other positions in the school, um, and doctors, um, other, and some businessmen. And some had larger, the larger schools had big crowds, you know, uh, big groups, but it has been wonderful, absolutely wonderful, because a variety of viewpoints helped them look at what might be the best thing to do. So every, every school came up with their own plan. We did not give them out. This is what you have to do. We gave them some design, yes, but they really, they have, I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of our principals and their task force. And the best idea we ever had is to get other people involved in it, not just those that are inside living it, honestly. Now, as you hear the news about other school systems around the country and some of the challenges they face, even in Mobile County, some of our local schools have had cases. How pleased are you with what has happened in these first few days of returning to school in the Catholic schools? I am very pleased to be honest with you. You know, so far all our students are still with us that came to school on Wednesday. We began on the, 4th, the 12th and so far we still have them. So I feel very, very happy that it's going very well, as well as to be expected in the new environment because it is different. It really is for everybody. Um, Give us an idea of some of the differences this year as compared to years past. Well, they have to be six feet you know, away from each other. And that's a very difficult thing to do in some of our classrooms. So as a result, some of our classrooms have had to move to other places. Um, we've had to take some furniture out of classrooms, but it, we have managed. They have truly managed to do that. Um, they, th some of them have even had to use some, their gym parts because they do other things now rather than just the gym anyway. But it, that's been, it's worked itself out. A lot of creativity in thinking that way. Um, um, I would say the, the, you can't have recess in the same way that you used to, you know, and everybody thought, oh no, we're not gonna have recess. So, but we do, we're able to have a variety of things that are students, sometimes the students can suggest things that they know and that's wonderful, but there were, there's so many other things that we were able to put together and everybody is doing them at different age levels and they're not out on the playground. It's not a big playground with everybody out there now, but some are out there at the same time, but they're distance way apart from each other and that's working. Even in the heat, you know, that's working. Um, our cafeteria, we do have the cafeteria still running, but all the food is taken to the classrooms and everybody is eating in the classrooms. And for some of us uh, larger schools, we've had to um, make shift some new classrooms actually, because there were too many students for the classrooms that we had that we were used to. But I will have to say it's working, you know, nothing's perfect, but you know, it wasn't perfect before either. So it, I'm very, I'm just very proud, I very, very much so. And we are, um, we, the majority of our school children have come back, the majority have. Um, they only about f in probably f maybe, maybe 60 or so that are doing the uh, from home, you know, the virtual. Most are back that are coming, you know, that were coming back. There's some that didn't, but it, we're very pleased with the opening, very pleased. When and you talk about the social distancing, uh, what about the health side with the uh, sanitizing and uh, hand washing and of course mask? How have you attacked that area? Well, all of our children K through 12 have to have the mask every day and, and that's working. It's amazing. Some of the smaller children, they like it. It's something different, new. They didn't do that all the time. You know, they think they're playing a game sometime too, the smaller ones, a little kindergarten. Um, so that has, 
that has worked. Um, I, in, I, I guess I, as I look at it and hear from the principals, and we continue to Zoom with our principals so that they bring up things that they're having difficulty with or get some new ideas from somebody or whatever, something might did not work, how can we do that differently? Um, it's, it's almost like you're living and learning at the same time to make sure that you're adjusting to the needs of the students and not just to what you planned ahead of time. And sometimes, you know, that's what you have to do. That's what education is all about. Mm -hmm. And especially Catholic education, that is. We try to look at the needs of our students, our parents, and go with it. And it, it does work. And we know that God is with us and come on. We're all in it together, you know, we're not on our own. Right. Now, when you look at uh, what some of the other schools are having to deal with, what's your plan in the event that you do have a, a small uh, number of kids develop the virus? What's the plan for addressing it without having to shut down the system completely? Uh, yes, we, we would, if, one, if something happened at one school, we would not have to shut down the other schools. We would not. Um, unless it, you know, happened in all of them at once or whatever, which we're not planning for that to happen. Um, it, because it, we are a smaller system, the, the, the piece that's different for us than most of the districts is that we have schools as far away um, as Auburn. You know, we have preschools in Auburn. You know, in Montgomery we have schools. And then, of course, we have four schools over in Baldwin County. And then the rest of our schools are in Mobile. And we have some of our preschoolers also, like in Enterprise and um, Dothan, you know, other places. So those are smaller functions, the, the, the younger ones are anyway. So we would not have to close down everybody unless something super, super happened. But we can do one of, you know, whatever school is affected the most or whatever that needs to be. Well, Superintendent Gwen Bird, we congratulate you on successfully reopening. And of course, uh, keep in touch to let us know how things go because everyone is now watching our schools, concerned about the kids and wanting them to return safely. We thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. Once again, Gwen Bird, Superintendent of Catholic Schools for the Archdiocese. Perspectives continues in just a moment. Next Saturday on Perspectives, if you live near downtown Mobile, whether you're in Mobile or Baldwin County, Mobile's airport is going to be located closer to you in the very near future. The airport authority has decided to move commercial air passenger service to the Brooklyn Aeroplex and its downtown airport. Now you'll be able to fly out on all of your favorite carriers from what the Mobile Airport Authority considers a more accessible location. We talked with the president of the Mobile Airport Authority, Chris Curry, to hear all the details. Now, he will also share how COVID-19 has affected our local airline traffic and the business itself. We'll also ask Chris Curry how safe it is to fly today. So if you fly on a regular basis or have plans to fly more often after the virus gets controlled, definitely join us next Saturday morning. And again, we thank our superintendents, Gwen Bird and Cressel Threadgill for their time this morning. And we're praying for a successful school year for all of our students throughout our area and in the Mobile County Public Schools and our Catholic Archdiocese schools as well. Well, join us here next Saturday morning at 9 for Perspectives as we discuss important issues and seek solutions. Of course, if you have any ideas or topics you'd like for us to address, just drop it to us at perspectives at fox10tv.com. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week.